hey everybody, Z Garcia here, and today I'm going to be revisiting my most anticipated games of 2020 list. This is a list we did about a year ago, looking forward to things that were coming out in 2020, ideally. Uh, and, uh, you know, we were just basically ranking these in, in the order of how excited we were to get our hands on them and play them. So we're going to kick it off, I'm going to go through the list, tell you what I think of the game, if I've played it. And uh, then at the end, maybe I'll tell you how I might rearrange this list now, knowing a little bit more about them. Okay, so let's kick it off at number 10 with Trekking the World. Trekking the World, I have played. I own a copy. I kickstarted this one. And it is a, a very nice game. I, um, I don't know if it's necessarily a game that set my gaming library on fire, but it's one that is stunning looking. It's a very beautiful game. I think the packaging of the components was a mistake from the company. It's basically just an empty cardboard box. And then there is one game trays thing in there, which is fantastic on its own. But it is just in there. And it's, it fits the box fairly well, but then it kind of moves around in, you know, within it. So that was a weird insert for the game. I also had a, a bad experience with getting a copy of it that was pretty damaged. It, the packaging was, you know, not the company's fault, but it was bad. But anyway, the game itself is good. It's a little bit more engaging than Trekking the National Parks, which is a sort of a, a, you know, a game that came before it in the same line. But the look, the, the fact that you're traveling to all these amazing, gorgeous locales, it makes for a, a very nice game. And it's one that I kind of knew what I was getting, and that's what I got. You know, family weight, you know, style game, and, and uh, enjoyable and attractive. Number nine for me is Fossilus. Fossilus I also played. I believe we did a group review of this one. And I wasn't quite sure what to expect, but I would say I'm a little less enthused than uh, I was at some point when I obviously put it on this list originally. I don't think it would make the list right now, knowing right what I know. The game is nicely produced. It is uh, got a cool theme on it. There's some sort of neat, you know, activities going on in it with digging up bones and moving these tiles around, but it feels too lucky and light for how many rules are in it and how many exceptions to rules and all that. And then it feels like it's got too much going on or, you know, for how, for the people that it should appeal to, if that makes any sense, right? Those two things for me are at odds. I want to play with kids. It's sort of that theme. You are using tweezers to dig out bones, but there's a bunch of rules they're going to have to internalize and figure out. The people who are gamers are going to find the game too swingy and lucky and uh, silly in many ways. So that's my main issue with it. I think it's going to have a hard time finding an audience. Even people that love that theme might fall into one of those two cams and not be happy with the other side of that equation. Still, not a bad game. Certainly a good production. And uh, Kids Table Board Gaming, or Board Games, that's the company that put it out, Absolutely know what they are doing when it comes to production and, and just, I mean, finalizing a game like nobody's business. It just quite wasn't for me. Number eight, Chronicles of Crime 1400. The newest on the list I've played. I just played a, a week or two ago. And it is excellent. I, I hadn't played Chronicles of Crime in a long time. I did not play some of those uh, expansions that came out after the original core box, like Noir... I've heard good things about, but I haven't played. But Chronicles of Crime 1400 has a great look. It works beautifully. It's smooth. It's engaging. I really like this one. I think it's a great box. Four adventures in there, mysteries, whatever you want to call them in there. And uh, I recommend you space them out, by the way, so you kind of forget people's faces and stuff like that when you replay some of the other ones. But it doesn't matter. It's, it's a great game about... You know, it's got suspense, it's got um, deduction in there, figuring out who knows what and why, and why are they answering the questions they're answering in the way they're answering them. I really enjoy Chronicles of Crime. This is no exception, and it makes me look forward to the follow-ups to this, 1900 and then 2400. I'm really looking forward to those even more now. So this one was a good call. 
Next up, one I did not play, Godspeed. Godspeed came out, I just never got around to playing it. And it's one that I still want to play, okay? So, I'm curious, I've heard good things. It seems like a heavier game than I originally anticipated it might be, but that's fine, I still want to check this one out. Now, next up at number six, Tidal Blades. Tidal Blades is a stunning production of a pretty good game. The game, I was less floored than some of the other folks at the Dice Tower who helped us, uh, you know, who reviewed it with me. Uh, we, we did a group review of it, but I still thought it was engaging. The Cadence was a little funny. It was one of those games where you simultaneously felt like you had not enough time to do what you wanted to do, but it was ramping up a little too quickly. Uh, it, it's a strange thing. The dice building, you were getting better and better dice, wasn't happening quickly enough, but the game was drawing to a close. So I think that rhythm, the rhythm of the game is a little... I can't quite put my finger on it. It's a little obtuse, perhaps. The game production, the theme, all of that stuff is very lovely. And this is one I would recommend without hesitation to someone as long as they know the kind of game they are getting. So, yeah, Tidal Blades is a good one. Number five, Mosquito Show. It's not one I played. It's not one that's never come into the Dice Tower. I've never even seen it in person. But it's... Uh, from the same line as a game I happen to have right here, actually, Jurassic Brunch, right here. Uh, Jurassic Brunch is from the same designer, Bruno Catala. It's also a two-player game. And the more I've read about Mosquito Show, the less excited I am about it. It seems a little too solvable. It seems a little too basic for me. The abstract nature of it is showing through the cute theme and the, the silly plastic uh, bits. So, I'm not sure that I would... I'm not that interested in playing it. If it comes across my table, I'll give it a try. It's very short, and from what I understand, but it's one that would certainly not make the list anymore right now if I was making the list again. Uh, number four, Cosmic Duel. Cosmic Encounter Duel. The last one that came out that I have not played, okay, uh, I heard mixed things about it. And I'm very take it or leave it on this one. You know, it's a two-player version of Cosmic Encounter. It seemed like they tried to do something different with the same IP. But I did not hear exceptionally great things about it. And it's one that I'm not really uh, seeking out at this point. So, again, if it comes across the table, I'll play it. Certainly a little more enthusiastically than Mosquito Show. But I'm not seeking this one out. Now, number three is the, the one on the list that did not come out. And it is one that I am insanely excited about getting to the table. It's a game called Arcades. <coughs> Excuse me. And this one, the more I see of it, the more excited I am to play. It's one I could easily see rising to the top of the list again. You know, if I'm... Of, of things here now, knowing as much as I do, it's one that I, 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 I might put at number one. It looks fantastic. It's this sort of dungeon crawly Egyptian theme meets steampunk and uh, the action selection and the dice rolling in it looks very streamlined, looks very engaging. It is a campaign game and I'm kind of yeah, I'm kind of up to here with campaign games, all these games that look very engaging, but you better dedicate 20 hours to it or else, right? You feel like you're not completing it or getting your enjoyment out of it but having said all that i cannot wait for this one to come out i am super excited for our case number two cleopatra and the society of architects the fancy schmancy edition played it i think it's great i like it as much as i like the original cleopatra because i do think that for for every one thing they added that was a, an improvement on the original game they did sort of take something away or make something slightly worse if you would the biggest offender is the card quality in the game is uh, pretty terrible. The cards are extremely thin. They're not standard size, so they cannot be that easily sleeved. And that just blows my mind that for the amount of production that went into this game, I mean, the epic scale of this thing, the card quality is that bad. So thin. The 
epic nature of it is also something that I think in some ways works against the game. It's this gigantic cube. It has all these plastic accoutrements that you're supposed to stick onto it, but it's unwieldy. It's a little much. It, it suffers. I think it, it found that line where you go from, you know, fan service to Kickstarter bloat, and it, it sort of, you know, went right over that, right? It, uh, it cavorted right over that line. So I like it a lot. Don't get me wrong. And I did keep a copy of that over the original Cleopatra because I think mechanically it is stronger. I, there's no question with that. But it's not perfect, okay? Lastly, my number one, Sleeping Gods. And boy, did I call it because Sleeping Gods is a sweet, sweet game. Fantastic production, engaging gameplay, great story. It sings mechanically. I mean, it's it's pretty easy, except for maybe combat. Combat's a little convoluted. But I was expecting near and far with more stuff in the way. Like, okay, well, it's going to be a little bit more... There's going to there's gonna be more to puzzle out and figure out that gets in the way of getting to the story. But I was wrong. This game is, is not more complicated than near and far, mechanically speaking. And the story is so cool. I just love the setting of all the players being on this ship together, traveling the seas, going off of the map, and then you flip to a new page, and now you can see a new section of this world that you are discovering. It's so story-driven and satisfying and fun. My only issue uh, as far as playing the game goes, well, there's that combat thing I said, but playing solitaire means you have to manage a whole lot of stuff. This, this one doesn't really scale when it comes to that. You just, you're kind of doing the job of all four people that would be at the table, right? So that's that's a little hard to do. But, man, get four people around the table, three people, and you're going to have a fantastic time. No question with this one. So there you go. Uh, that's what I think. Overall, I think these are good. I mean, this, this list, I'm happy with, uh, you know, the things I picked. couple I missed that I do want to go back to at some point and play Godspeed. First and foremost, that was at 7, but that's the one I want to play the most from the ones I haven't played. And then after that, Cosmic Encounter Duel, and then after that, Mosquito Show, whatever. Arcades didn't come out, but that would be the must-play from the list. And from the other ones, if I was going to reorganize the other ones, I would say Sleeping God's still at the top. I would say uh, Cleopatra's still number 2, but then after that, I'm looking at Trekking the World, which was my 10. I'm going to bump that up because they really finalized that game very well. Chronicles of Crime was my 8. Uh, and again, it's beautiful. Then Tidal Blades. Then Fossilus at the bottom of the list. Not bad. These are all at least, uh, I think, a 6 or a 7. But Fossilus I'm a little less excited about. So there you go. Let me know what you think of those. Which of these, if any, surprised you? Uh, you know, what games were you looking forward to that finally did come out in 2020 and either made you very, very happy or you were disappointed by? I'm curious to hear what you think of the, the year as a whole, how things panned out for games you were looking forward to and you finally got your hands on. Or maybe you're still waiting for something. What are you still waiting for that should have been out already? All right, everybody, that's going to do it for me. My name is Z Garcia. Thank you. I'll see you on the next one.